What's the worst example of personal hygiene you've ever seen from someone? I used to work retail and one day we had this woman come into the store who had not showered in months. She stunk the whole store up from just walking around. We had to ask her to leave due to hygiene. I will never forget that stench. It was like low tide and a dead body had been sitting around for a month. I work in an or in a low income area. There was one that I'll never forget. She was a mid 40s obese hoarder who had decided it wasn't worth the effort to get out of her recliner for 2 weeks straight. She had a fridge within reach so she wasn't hungry but was producing fesses and urine the entire time without getting up to use the restroom or to clean herself. You could smell her down the hall with the door closed and her behind was literally rotting away with pressure sores down to her bones. I have a girlfriend who thought that it was normal for guys to have dingler berries. Poor girl was going down on a guy with matted turd fur. I worked at an engine assembly plant in NY state where everyone is in these 3 5 station teams that rotate every hour so you don't go crazy doing the same job for 8 plus hours. But we had this dude who came to our group who had the nastiest teeth I've ever seen in my life. His bottom front teeth were all fused together into one big, lower task. And his breath could gag a maggot. It got so difficult to work with the guy. You could smell his breath from at least 6 feet away. That we had to go to a manager to figure out how to handle it and not be dongs. Well they basically told him he needed to do something about it. So he constantly had a tub of mints on him. After that, his breath just smelled like a rotting corpse and mint. So, yay. I lived in a triple dorm when I was a sophomore in college. Two friends and myself. When my friend transferred to a different school over Christmas break, the college automatically added in a third person as our dorm had the only opening on campus. The girl was a year younger than us, not a huge deal. But the problem developed a few days after she moved in with us. There was a slight odor when she walked by. The odor grew day by day. We began to realize that she wasn't showering. We had an inside bathroom and we would hear the water turn on in the shower for about 5 minutes. But she never came out with wet hair or looking any different than when she went in. We went for a soft approach at first. We went to Bath and Body Works and got her a really nice basket of scented soaps and shampoos and conditioners. Because she only had one very old generic shampoo that she'd had in the shower. She was very grateful and we thought that would be the end of it. She put the shower items in the shower. And literally nothing else changed. The levels on the soaps and shampoo didn't go down. The smell was getting worse. We sat down with her and had a serious but concerned conversation. We said that we were worried about her and wanted to know if she was okay and how we could help. She said everything was fine and nobody else had ever mentioned her smelling bad. I find that completely impossible as she was surrounded by a stench of body odor coming from every pore. She said she'd shower more. She began going to parties, which we thought would make her clean up a bit, but it didn't. She would just add cheap alcohol to the body odor scent. After about a month, my roommate and I went to the dorm advisor and explained what the situation was and how we were done. She was smelling worse every day and was beginning to be very snotty to us. The resident director met with her and although he couldn't tell us what happened during the meeting, he verified that he could smell the odor coming off of her. Thankfully, she had made a friend. A very odd duck but a duck that I am still thankful for, and that friend's roommate moved out. She moved within a week. We ran into her on campus every now and then. Same stink. I gotta give you credit for how you handled the situation. Very kind of you. Too bad she didn't take it to heart. I had a friend with very low self esteem. Could never find a GF. Self pity type of guy. He had the worst grime film on his teeth. I told him he won't find a GF until he cleans his teeth because it's repulsive to anyone with any respect for themselves. In less words. He denied it saying someone will like him for him. Blah blah blah. Well one day his grandma paid for him to see a dentist who made them pearly whites once again. Not two weeks later had himself a GF. Still thinks it was never the problem. His mentality of not accepting of the truth can also cause him serious problems in life. Woman was a heavy heavy smoker. Which can cause a lot of issues in itself. And bad B.O. like she never showered. And the list goes on and on. But the worst thing was this nasty brown blouse she had that she wore all the time. I mean like, 4 days a week at least. But she did wear other things occasionally because they always jumped out. Thing is, 
there was a picture on her desk wearing that blouse from like 5, 6, whatever years before, and it was white in that picture. I just thought it was coincidence and no way it was the same one till one of her co-workers who shared the office with her started bitching about her one day when she was gone, and the woman confirmed it was the same shirt, and she had slowly watched it change from white to whatever disgusting it currently was over the years. My grandparents were heavy smokers, my granddad did quit eventually but my nan smoked until she died. Anyway I'm there with my mom and aunt clearing out the house and they always had this yellow green wallpaper. Start taking family pictures off the walls and suddenly this lovely baby blue wallpaper is staring at us. A guy we called the stink beast. I was a rent to own delivery guy right out of college. We had a regular customer that smelled like a sock stuffed with boiled cabbage and soaked in diarrhea. All the time. He also only wore tank tops. I went to his nasty house to pick up a stereo he couldn't pay for. I spent 20 minutes in his house unhooking wires etc. There was dog crap on the couch, next to me in more than one spot. And I mean actual turds. Not a smear of something. I rolled the stereo out on a dolly through several more piles of crap and loaded the stereo into the van. As I'm ready to close the door, he runs out with a wad of cash and wants me to put it back. While I'm writing up a new ticket, he leans in to adjust something on the stereo. His sweaty, hairy, pit jams right into my face. It was like getting hit in the face with a used diaper. I immediately whirled around and puked in his yard. While I'm trying to be nice and pretend I'm getting the flu, his dog proceeds to come over and eat my puke. So yeah, this guy. Bonus to the story. Two years or so after this happened I saw the stink beast at an old country buffet. I told my wife that he was there, and her reply was that he must be the guy in the blue tank top. She said she could smell him. From the opposite side of the steam table, said people were sniffing the steamer like something had spoiled. I literally just exclaimed aloud, Jesus Mary and Joseph, this is, FFS, I want to throw up now. I had a part time job at uni cleaning out student rooms after the occupants had moved out. One room was left with no fewer than 28 bottles of pee that the occupant had decided just to leave in the room. The shared bathroom was next door. This guy and his family didn't like to shower, and they all had food stains all over their clothing. And the father smelled like he crapped himself, smelled like pee, but that wasn't the worst part. The worst part is he had food stuck in his hair and maggots crawling in it. Literally the guy smelled like death. He said I was being offensive because I stood 10 feet away from him. Guy had the nerve to call my manager over who then immediately stuck his hand up and said he wasn't interested in hearing his story that he needed to leave and not come back until he took a shower. After this is when he started taking care of himself. I am so glad he started taking care of himself. I hope the whole family followed that example and it was the beginning of better lives for everyone. And I am glad your manager had your back. I met a girl on a dating app. We got along well online, but she smelled like butt in person. I'm talking fully clothed and several feet away. There was still a stench of butt. I was really embarrassed for her tbh. She complained about guys ghosting her and not knowing why. I mean it's not easy to tell someone they smell like butt. I don't know how you couldn't be aware of it either. So, I used to work at this really upscale vegan hot pot restaurant a few years ago. The owner manager was very adamant on how it's okay not to wash your hands because in my country, washing hands meant you're cleaning off the hard work you've done. She was the only person who would, even after using the bathroom. We knew she wouldn't wash her hands. She'd use gloves yes and she'd handle food sometimes. But even then, still wash your freaking hands. Also, my ex told me he didn't think it was necessary to wash his dong cause my dong just washes itself when the shampoo runs down my body in the shower. People say that about their feet too. Wash your dang feet. You do not want nasty feet. Especially if you're diabetic. You get nasty feet. You get ulcers. You get an infection. Now you have no feet to wash. I'm a nurse, so I've seen some crap. But the worst would be a woman with scabies and fleas. I don't know how she got them, but she was so ashamed of having them, that she basically just barricaded herself at home for some weeks, until her daughter got her admitted to the hospital. I'm not exaggerating when I say that everything on her jumped when you came close to her bed or she moved. She had them everywhere and I mean everywhere. I spare you the description of her intimate area. Ugh. 
My aunt is a nurse and she had some stories. One that stuck out was a large obese woman came in, and they had to bathe her. My aunt said she lifted up one of her breasts only to be greeted by live maggots. I dated a hippie. Now, he showered every day, but never used soap or shampoo because of chemicals. We had sex a couple times and, yeah, he was a bit whiffy, but nothing too grotesque. I'm into perfumery so also have a thing for the smells of humans. I was cool with it. One day he wanted me to rim him. My mind immediately went to the fact that he never used soap, so his was probably in, well, pretty crappy shape. I sensually suggested we take sexy time to the shower. I sexually got the shower gel and made a big deal of soaping him up top to bottom. Finishing on his butthole, the water ran brown. It ran brown from years of built up crap. I watched as the densely crappy soapy water went down the drain and realized I could do better in life. Or at least stop dating hippies. I work in medical so I've seen a lot. But, one of my good friends who is a higher level marketing person at a university and has a master's degree asked me how often I cleaned my house. I found out she showers once every 10 days, has numerous skin infections, wipes off kitchen counters maybe once a month once things mold, etc. But the worst part was when she told me she never changes washes her sheets. She had them on her bed for 2 years and never took them off until she threw them away because she bought new ones. And I feel bad when I don't change my sheets after one week. After a night at a bar, I went home with this cute guy who outwardly seemed pretty normal and attractive. Got to his place and it was filled with garbage. Like a layer of garbage spread on the floor. I had a few drinks in me so I was like okay he's cute. This is gross but let's see how it goes. Takes me to his bedroom and there's literally disgusting old food and garbage on the bed and in the sheets. Like not just containers, expired disgusting open food directly on the bed and lots of it. It was so revolting I started thinking excuses to leave. This guy was cute though so I stuck around another 510 thinking how we can work this out. We sat on the bed and literally under the sheets were filled with garbage too. He proceeds to take off his socks for whatever reason and his toenails are completely black under the nails long his feet are so dirty like they hadn't been washed ever. I gagged a little before bolting out of there saying I didn't feel well which I didn't. Honestly I was young and willing to put up with a lot but it was a no go. Oh frick. That's disgusting. My sister went to university with a guy that never cleaned up. His room just built up, layer by layer, with old takeout, dirty clothes, random rubbish. Instead of picking clothes up and washing them, he'd just buy new ones. Can't imagine what it was like to pick all that up when he moved out. I have one and only one instance of insane hygiene. When I was in college they got some dorm assignments screwed up. I played baseball and thus I was in the athletic dorm. For some reason rather than assigning another ball player to my room they assigned some random guy. This initially was no problem for me. I was not a stereotypical jock and had many friends who were not athletes. The first day was okay. Turned out he worked at Domino's Pizza and would bring home 4 or 5 pizzas after work. So he shows up with some pizza and says I can have all I want. I'm thinking this might be cool. Free pizza every day. Alas. Things quickly took a turn. The first and second nights I noticed just a hint of that dirty feet smell. Dude didn't take his shoes off either night so I was like where is this coming from. But really it was not that noticeable. Just the occasional whiff as I said. The third night. OMG. I walked in from baseball practice late and he was already there playing his Xbox. He had the latest versions of PS and Xbox and tons of games. I mention this so that it's clear that poverty is not to blame for this situation. Anyway, I walked into the room and smelled a smell that I have never smelled before or since. A smell beyond description. He had simply taken off his shoes. His socks were black. They were supposed to be white. God knows the last time he had changed them. I stepped back outside to keep from gagging. For the next month until they straightened out the dorm situation I was only in my room for sleep. Nothing else. The only way I could sleep was to spray my pillow with cologne or something and bury my face in it. The smell hung in the air after that. Even when he wasn't there. When my friends would come by to get me to go out they would walk in on immediate turn and leave and give me WTF look. During my month living with my new friend, who to my knowledge never actually attended a class, I never saw him shower. I saw him in two sets of clothes during that month. 
his pizza uniform and a t-shirt and gym shorts ensemble completed by his soiled socks. After he was relocated I never saw him again, and I pray that whoever was his new roommate was born without a sense of smell. Seems like he gave up on everything tbh. We had two regulars that used to come into our bar, in their later years of life, but enjoyed the atmosphere and loved chatting up anyone who would listen. Things started going south a few years back when we started getting some complaints that they would sometimes smell like urine. Then it dawned on me, I hadn't seen either of them get up and go to a washroom. Eventually we came to find out that instead of acting like normal members of society, they would come in, drink beer for a few hours, and just casually pee themselves while wearing diapers and not think anyone would notice. I went to a friend's house and she picked up poop from her cat's litter box with her hand, and proceeded not to wash her hands. Stop. What the frick? This might be the most fricked one here, in my opinion. While in Manhattan found a homeless guy, unconscious in an alley with maggots coming out of his mouth, told a cop on the corner. Dude that sounds a bit more than just unconscious. My sister went to the same college that I went to. I visited her dorm room once and her suitamate walked in. I was all the way across the room and she just walked into the common room on the other side, but I could smell her immediately. Apparently, she showered once a week, and by showered, I mean turned on the water, rinsed off without using soap, turned off the shower. She also refused to clean up anything when it was her turn so apparently her lack of hygiene was consistent to other forms of cleanliness. Local drug addict. Very sad to see as he looks very young but has obviously been a heavy user for years. Skin and bones and hobbling. Anyway, when he goes in the local shop you can smell him from at least 3 aisles away. Smells like he's rotting. It's so pungent. Sometimes junkies develop brutal infections from repeatedly injecting into the same spot. That's probably what you're smelling. Plus the not showering ever doesn't help. My wife was a labor and delivery nurse and she told me one time a woman was having a baby and the doctor asked the woman if she wanted that mole looked at, then poked at it with a set of hair masters. The mole moved and it was actually a cluster of crabs that the woman had on her parts. My wife was horrified, so she told me. Girl I was friends with at university had been complaining of an itchy head for a couple of weeks. We all joked it could have been headless but none of us had any contact with children. Anyway, this girl was known for her lack of showering. We worked in the same restaurant together and she'd frequently finish a shift, sleep in her uniform and go back the next day without even a pat down with a wet wipe just to put it in context. One day in a lecture she scratched her head and a huge louse came out and walked across her paper. It was shocking honestly. Later that day she's got delicing shampoo and a comb. I swear to god each time she pulled the comb out of her hair you couldn't even see the teeth. It was just alive and moving with lice. Still one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. I mean her head was literally crawling with lice. I felt this comment in my soul. I had a landlord who reeked of garlic. You could smell him from a mile away. It would take a whole day to get the smell out of the apartment after he left. He was from Transylvania so I always joke that he fled the vampires and applied garlic every day just to be safe. My grandma gave me a garlic pill to fend off the mosquitoes. It fended off everyone else too. I have so many stories for this but end seems almost cheating for this thread. When I was a student there was a fella who had been getting worse and worse with mobility and mental health. So has his wife but I only dealt with the husband. There was crap all over him. Halfway up his shins. Almost up to his elbows. All over down there too of course. There was an infection from his toes all the way up to his knees that was all swollen and his skin had started to crack like an overcooked sausage. Except instead of tasty stuff inside, it was yellow puss leaking out. He was septic and in a seriously bad way. How he got so bad was just because couldn't didn't remember how to do hygiene. His hands were caked in crap and used toilet paper with really long gross fingernails. I also had a homeless person who was absolutely covered in fleas, lice and even had crabs in his hair. Everything was just gross. Big crap and urine stains all over the three pairs of pants and four shirts. That was tolerable though, until the hospital decided to take off his shoes. The smell and look of those corn chip toenails are something I want to forget. My oldest brother had developed a problem of using plastic bottles to pee in instead of going 2 feet to the bathroom, 
his room is right next to it. I came home for the first time in months, and me and my other brothers were doing some cleaning. One of them went to put some clothes in his room, and on the desk next to the door was a drinking cup full of fresh pee from that morning. We have no idea if he has peed in any other cups that everyone else drinks from. It's escalated from moldy food and snot socks eating holes into the wall next to his bed to him being too lazy to go pee. He can get up out of bed to pee in a cup, but not to go use the toilet. The grossest thing is he has tried to pass it off as apple juice or sweet tea, and he gets upset for anyone telling my parents and insists he doesn't do it despite the overwhelming evidence. He's 20. BTW. This poor elderly woman had been found down and admitted directly to my IQ. Turned out she had been having diarrhea for the past 4-5 months, which led to dehydration and a fall, orthostatic hypertension. Physical examination showed she had a massive fungating and obstructing anal cancer, so technically she couldn't poop, but she had developed a fistula through the cancer through which she diarrheaed every day. Far and away one of the most abhorrent images I have in my mind from surgical internship. She knew she couldn't care for herself, but assumed thought someone would check on her. No one did, and she became too weak to call for help. Luckily the mailman realized the mail piling up and called the police. The saddest part was that she was really hurt by the fact that none of her neighbors checked on her. Luckily she had no metastases despite the horrific local invasion, and after surgery she did well. Social services got involved and I'm hoping she's in a better place. I visited a friend's apartment and went to use the bathroom. There was no soap of any kind, not even shampoo. He told me he saw no need since he was living alone and they were just his own germs. Worked at a private school where they didn't have soap in the washrooms. Just one of those revolving rag cycle things. I was in a class with 12 boys. All got sick and their parents got pee. Not sure how people don't learn the function and importance of soap. Friends and I invited a new guy to a 7 day land party. Now, you've probably heard of using deodorant in place of a shower. But this guy was something else. He'd actually pour the stuff in his hand and rub it on his skin like a lotion. Neck, chest, elbows, dong, butt, and knees. Dude had an aura of suffocating chemical ooze around him. It was awful. I'll never understand how people go to conventions and such and think they can just skip out on bathing. No. I don't care if there are 10 of you sharing a hotel room 5 of you can go to breakfast and the other 5 can rotate showers, then switch. I literally do not care if your group has to miss a panel to avoid being the literal embodiment of why people think nerds are against general hygiene. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.